but six errors to go along with it, so only a net plus one, and then you want to have a much bigger spread on that, positives and negatives, to help your team out. Glass looking to Ari Wilson. Point Penn State on the touch. Got a lot of quickness there that Penn State can exploit. They love to use Wilson in various parts across the net. This time, that backslide all the way out to the sideline. Penn State has erased the four-point deficit to even things back up here in the third. And Hodge gets them the lead. One thing we saw a lot last night, Glass and Hodge, a lot of smiles. They're having a lot of fun in this, their senior NCAA tournament. Ten points away from the match for Penn State. with one dream, that's to win a national championship. We'll whittle the field down to four with our 10 hours of coverage today on ESPNU of all four of the regional finals, including the two-time defending champs from Penn State. They are looking for that unprecedented third title in a row. The two-seat Texas, the three-seat Florida State, both still alive. They'll be playing their matches uh, coming up later in the day. Hawaii, Michigan will be the nightcap. The Wolverines and the Seminoles trying to get back or trying to get to the semis for the first time in their school's history. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship begins on Thursday, December 17th at 7 Eastern on ESPN2 with our semifinal coverage from Tampa, Florida. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. And amongst the intrigue later today, Karch, I think for most volleyball fans, the buildup all year has been leading towards a Penn State, Texas showdown in the final. They've been ranked number one and two all year long. But that matchup today, Texas having to go to Omaha to play Nebraska will be an intriguing one. Well, when the brackets were announced, everybody was like, well, we didn't know the Big 12 had a postseason tournament, <laughs> but apparently they do all top yes! four Big 12 teams in that part of the bracket. And it's down to the final two, Nebraska beating Iowa State. And on the other part, Texas beating Texas A&M. Baylor also having a nice tournament, losing to Cal here yesterday. But it should be a great matchup, Texas versus Nebraska on essentially Nebraska home court. Point for Penn State. Coming up next will be the Minneapolis region final with Florida State riding a 19-match winning streak, playing in their first Elite Eight against Minnesota, a team that could win essentially on its home court to get back to the semis for the uh, fourth time in the last six years. Ooh. Don't like that play by Lloyd. Hodge tried to put it away. And does so. Point Penn State. You can just see a little sign of desperation when your setter puts it over easy on the second contact when she has hitters like Chudra and Murray to work with. Got to get them in the best frame of mind possible. Give them a hittable set like that. And they get the kill on the point. Murray. Tattoos that one off of Blair Brown. Point for Cal. The other player that it seems like Cal's got to get going is Mindy Wiley, number 21 for the middle hitter, who's averaging 347, almost three kills a per set, but only has three tonight total. And it's hitting zero as Hodge continues to roll. That's now 14 for Megan. She's hitting 500 on the day. The two-time Big Ten Player of the Year. And the thing when you ask Russ Rose to describe her game, here she is again with the swing. So she is able to do more things that I've never seen before. And the player that perhaps most mirrors his personality amongst the group that's on the court as Penn State gets another point. And they are so similar that sometimes they uh, they butt heads a little bit just because they're both feisty, competitive, and stubborn. Hodge leading the way for the Nittany Lions. They're five points away from the match.
Two-time defending champion Penn State looking to close out Cal and get the sweep here in the regional final for Russ Rose. And uh, yet another record in jeopardy with the win today if the Nittany Lions can get it. They would tie the NCAA tournament record for consecutive wins at 16, which uh, USC currently holds. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championships will begin on Thursday night at 7 o'clock on ESPN2 with our semifinal coverage. The championship will be Saturday night down in Tampa. For more information, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Point for Cal. Chutura back to serve. She has really been the, the one bright spot for them with the 16 kills. It's the ace. One star serving at the other star there. Tudor going at Hodge, and Hodge just not putting out a, a platform that angled the ball to the right location. Tudor again serves it at Hodge. Gets the free ball out of it for Cal. They're going to tie it up. And the set to the middle, and Cat Brown, the freshman, gets it. And the match is even. Only her fifth swing, her first a, for a fifth attempt of the whole match. She is much like Balsa on the other side of the net, not a big part of the Cal offense. Could say the set is even until Blair Brown puts it away. 13 kills for Blair. See if Hodge goes away from her jump spin. She does and just stands and floats it over. The block able to keep up that swing. Hodge out of the back. Chutura tries to return the favor. Three blockers were waiting for her on the other side. Chutura missed it long. Timeout, Cal. Three points away from winning the match for Penn State. We've got women's basketball coming your way tomorrow on ESPNU with the Maggie Dixon Classic from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Freshman sensation Brittany Griner and the Baylor Bears taking on Boston College. And then Pat Summit's undefeated Tennessee Lady Vols will meet Rutgers. And that's at 3 Eastern after that first one. Women's basketball in the Maggie Dixon Classic. And uh, the numbers a uh, few resumes if any can match pat summits in her 36th season with those eight ncaa titles i think only coach wooden has more with 10. but you look at that winning percentage 839 and then you compare it to russ rose active leader 862 998 wins two away and actually just three points away from 999 here today what a phenomenal job he's done with this penn state program and very similar to the way that Pat Summit runs her practices and runs her program. Everything they do is very competitive. All the drills that they run daily in practice. Coaches all across, across in college sports face that challenge of making those 20 hours a week, every second of those count, and making it most efficient, making the teaching and the learning carry over to the game. We were talking about it yesterday. Pianists or other college or engineers don't get in, in college limited to those 20 hours. So coaches have to make every second, every minute of that count. Corey Johnson gets the kill. Point Cal. Back within one. Kristen Obermeyer serving. Helping out Penn State right there, two points from the match. DeRico, who's been a dynamo behind the service line. Four aces today in the match. Gets another one. Match point Penn State on the verge of getting back to the national semis. Lloyd to Wiley, 
Glass got to it. Blair Brown. The black cow stays alive. Nice play by Alicia Glass to get going forward and pick that shot up, keep it alive. But they don't win that point. Another match point for Penn State here. Hodge to Glass to Brown. Penn State advances to the national semis.